at, at, at a higher level, like a machine fight is like a it's like a philosophy or methodology, right? So basically, we're talking about you know how can we use the Web three token economics to incentivize the deployment of machines? How can we like uh, tokenize or financializing the utility and data coming out of our machine, and eventually have like a composable and transparent way to building like a innovative applications on top of? Hey everybody, Tanner here with Wagney Ventures. On today's episode, we have Rowland Chai, co-founder of IOTEX Network. For anyone who's new, this is the Wagney Ventures podcast, where we do company snapshots with interesting founders from across Web3. Check out wagneyventures.io to learn more about the syndicate behind the podcast. But for now, let's get into it with Rowland from IOTEX Network. All right. Hey, everybody. I'm here with Rowland Chai, co-founder of IOTEX Network. Rowland, how are you doing today? I'm good, Tanner. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, definitely. I'm excited to chat. Um, I figure we can just jump right in. So I love. I like to always start just by asking a little bit more about your story and kind of what brought you to, to building IOTEX. Yeah, so definitely. Uh, that's, that's a favorite part of the conversation always, right? So I... I'm actually like a, kind of like a cryptography researcher. Um, I get into Bitcoin and blockchain really early when I was doing my PhD in cryptography. You know, my research is all around how do we design the encryption algorithm to make it like a more secure or on the other side, how to crack like an encryption algorithm, right? So Bitcoin white paper actually, you know, just, just came to me in, I think at the year end of 2008, I track a lot of interesting from just not just me, like people around me. That's a group of like crypto researchers. Um, so we're trying to attack Bitcoin because we think it's too good to be true, but we failed. Then we fall in love with Bitcoin. So that's where I, you know, start to, to get into the space. Uh, you know, af- after my graduation, um, as a PhD, right, in 2012, there, like a Web3, there's not, not, not a thing called Web3, actually, at that time. Right. It was in the super preliminary, right? Right. So I, I joined Google, stayed there for five years in the leading team for infra, security, and cloud. And then another year, you know, at Uber, basically leading team for cryptography research, as well as privacy security. Then year end of 2017, I feel like, okay, so this industry is getting more mature. And also on the side, I definitely like start to, um, you know, looking a lot of things on Ethereum starting back in 2014. Uh, on the side, right? So, so that's that's where I think I should do something Web three. So that's kind of like becomes the goal for my for my life, right? So that's where I live, you know, the companies and started IOTEX with two hundred co founders year end of twenty seventeen. Love it, yeah. So, what is IOTEX? Can you tell us a little bit more about what you're building? Yeah, so uh, it's complicated, right? So, but like IOTEX is more like a layer one plus layer two type of network. Uh, so we're really focused on the, the IoT, Internet of Things, as well as Web3. Like the vision, like we're having actually starting back in 2017, is always how do we using these machines in the real world to try to connect in like the Web3 to the real world or the other way around. Because, you know, like DeFi is a huge success, right? In the past few years, it's like $1 billion in 2019, become $100 billion in 2021, and even $500 billion maybe a few years later, who knows? But we do think, you know, what is bigger than the DeFi? That's definitely like a real world economy, right? So if there's a way we can kind of extend the capability of the smart contract of the blockchain, uh, into the real world in terms of like, you know, proof of humanity, you know, programming the physical world in a way, maybe UBI. So that is like something like super huge promising. And uh, I think that's that's a future. So that's yeah. why like we are always very focused on this bridge. You know, bridge is a popular word as of now. Uh, but that's a bridge between the real world and, uh, and the Web3. So that's what we're working on. Yeah, super interesting. So... I'm curious about the underlying philosophy kind of behind, because I, I was doing a little a, a little reading before our conversation and kind of this this machine fi concept, right? I read I read a line back from an article in March that said uh, machine resources and intelligence can be monetized to provide value and ownership to individuals rather than centralized corporations. So I'm curious, am I just plucking that incorrectly, or is that uh, would that fit into kind of the bigger philosophy of kind of what you're building? And can you unpack that a little bit if so? 
definitely. So machine Fi is more like an extended vision for like a you know IoTax vision, which we started back in 2017. You know, because we see this like the society is definitely like a moving forward. By 2030, there will be 100 billions of machines around us, you know, transforming the society fundamentally. So this is not said by me, but by McKinsey and other kind of Boston consulting groups type of company. And the machine will actually contribute to 30% of the global GDP. That means the machine economy itself will become like a really huge economy. Uh, I, I think people say 12 or 13 trillion dollar economy for those machines. Um, if you think about it, right, so the machine actually you know, around us knows what we're doing and also helping us, you know, getting from point A to point B. I think all sorts of things, there is some sort of like economic layer behind. But if you look at like a today, like the machine industry or like the IoT industry, it's pretty much stagnated, right? So we're actually you know, trapped in IoT kind of as of now, as of today. Couple of reasons. Um, so, you know, if you're talking about hardware, machine, device, that means like usually like a very big upfront cost, you know, for the R&D, for distribution, for installation, deployment of the, those devices. Who's paying for that? Right. Is that you? VC or someone else, right? That's become like a bottleneck for innovation. Second wise, like there's no like a network effect at all. There is no composability. Like Amazon, he can do his or like smart home sort of thing by himself, but there's no no way, you know, other kind of makers or builders can come in to trying to put things together to do something like impactful on top of their component. Everything is so close. Again, another source for no uh, or reason for no competition and no innovation in the space. And third one is like a device utility usually not fully utilized. So think about it, if you have a car, you have something you, you bought, right? 80% 80, 80 of time it's idle. It's just sitting there, you know. <laughs> um, but, you know, if you think about the future, those machines can actually work for you, right? You are not using the machine. Maybe the car can just do some, I don't know, Uber-like business by itself. If autonomous driving becomes a thing, uh, that basically pays off the cost for the car, right? Another one is like a fridge. I just joking with my colleagues using this uh, example is like a if you buy a fridge the fridge actually you know, knows your diet if those data can be you know monetizing a way in terms of like understand how human you know um, using the food or like a how human the, the diary works so that cost can eventually you know pay off for a new fridge for you then everybody have like a, a free fridge that's kind of like a thing you know uh, machine yeah. fi you know um, trying to uh, trying to cover at, at a higher level, like a machine fire is like a, it's like a philosophy or methodology, right? So basically we're talking about, you know, how can we use the Web3 token economics to incentivize the deployment of machines? How can we like uh, tokenize or financializing the utility and data coming out of our machine and eventually have like a composable and transparent way to building like an innovative applications on top of? Super interesting. Yeah. So you touched on some of these already, but I'm curious about what kind of interesting possibilities that aren't apparent are unlocked by bringing these machines on chain, uh, maybe beyond the ones you've mentioned in, in categories that maybe people wouldn't be thinking about. Yeah. So there are like a, a few interesting um, categories here. So one is x right? So everybody knows Stepan, everybody knows, you know, Access Infinity, but definitely like this concept, concept can be generalized even more. So think about if you have a um, like a watch or like a smart ring on you, so you can usually do like a sleep to earn, right? Because those device knows mm. if you sleep good or not by giving you some tokens um, to incentivize like good healthy behavior. And another example is like a drive to earn. Um, I, I saw a few companies has been working on this actually starting from last year, decentralized Uber or decentralized Google map, right? So that's kind of like an X to earn model. And a more interesting one I personally like is like a, a proof of humanity. Hmm. Basically, for now, in for a lot of DeFi, NFT, or game use cases, is you know in blockchain world, it's easy to create like a, a account, right? That means um, many of the accounts are just fake account, and you do not want to you know give tokens or airdrop tokens or NFTs to those accounts. Right. If there's a way you can do proof of humanity, definitely like a, you know soulbound token is one way to do this proof of humanity then one count becomes super valuable compared to maybe some bot accounts. Um, for example, you can show, you maybe do a, like a, uh, I don't know, some sending some sort of proof to this account saying, okay, this is real because I have been in Miami for the past 30 days. I have been attending East Denver. So, you know, I'm driving 30 minutes every day. I'm running every, every day, every week. 
So this becomes like a really like a profile of a user that itself, you know, becomes very valuable to right. a lot of deep NFT applications. Super interesting. So what are you learning thus far about the ecosystem of projects and products who are building on IOTEX already? And maybe to what, what direction do you see being most fruitful for new projects on IOTEX? Yeah, so that's that's a two parts. So you know, you know, from twenty nineteen, sorry, twenty seventeen to twenty nineteen, we actually did this layer one um, from ground up. You know, it's a POS EVM compatible chain running by one hundred validators. Uh, just you know, we crossed fifty million transactions as you know a few days back. So the chain itself has been like super successful, and we do have like a mini ecosystem, two hundred ish of uh, projects. You know, kind of sprouting on on, on top of IOTAX. But IOTEX layer one is not enough. Like a new project that we have been working on since Q3 last year is something called WebStream. So this is more like an off-chain compute part or middleware, right? So no, no matter how you call this one, or some people call it Oracle, it's all the same. Um, so this is the part that talking with the devices, ingesting the data, doing the validation, doing the computation on top of the data, then sending a proof of you know what has been done. Maybe you're traveling from A to B, right? Maybe you're running three miles a day. Maybe you're sleeping well. So this becomes sort of some sort of proof, uh, which is sent to the D app, the smart contract, um, to you know to act- activate some sort of like a token distribution or reward distribution. Um, so if you look at like an industry, there is no such uh, infra has been built. But personally, I think this will be the key milestone for um, Web3 or smart contract to extend to the real world. Really interesting, yeah. Uh, tagging onto that too, so I also read recently that <clears throat> you guys raised a $100 million fund that the goal is to back over 1,000 decentralized machine economy startups, developing new use cases for connecting more than 10 million smart devices to the machine five portal within the next three years. So I'm curious how that's going and, and what you've learned thus far. Yeah, so different like our value prop is always, you know, helping like a device manufacturers as well as web builders, you know, to work together to have some sort of like a machine five projects. So if you think about Helium, right? So Helium is, of course, they do, they did everything ground up. So, um, but it's a type of like a machine five projects. And there are other kind of um, machine five projects we're seeing they're sprouting right now. So the purpose for this ecosystem fund is try to encourage also incentivize startups like us builders, entrepreneurs, even device manufacturers, you know, to work with each other and try to bootstrap more machine networks in this world. If you think about it, right, so in this world, there are really like like a very few machine networks uh, and most of them actually uh, is dominated by a centralized company like the base station, like the 4G, 5G network, right? Those things are actually dominated by the telecommunication companies. And uh, I personally think there should be like a lot of more machine networks. So that's why we can bridge the real world into the Web3 or the other way around easily. Super interesting, yeah. So how do you guys think about security with respect to IOTEX, perhaps differently or maybe even more uh, urgently or prioritized than than other protocols? Yeah, I think security means a lot, right? It means very different things. If you talk about the layer one security, I think uh, we're pretty good on that. So our layer one has been running by 100 more validators, pretty decentralized and censorship, as well as like the protocol itself has been very well designed and also built by the top notch, like, uh, you know, Silicon Valley engineers. Uh, in the past years, so the chain has never been, you know, been down actually since we launched. Oh wow! Yeah, so that's a uh, that's a blockchain, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting down. Yeah. So then, if we're talking about like the security for those layer one, right? So, uh, layer two, I'm sorry, uh, which is talking about the device data coming to the web stream, coming to the to the D apps. So there are like a uh, uh, many like a uh, uh, many aspects for security here. Like how do we validate the data is actually coming from the device? How do we trust the device is actually producing the the right data? And how do we make sure from the web stream to the D apps, like the proof is authentic and never been like a tempered, right? So that's all sorts of like a research questions we are facing. We have some solutions, but if like we're working with top notch researchers from top universities, as well as some other projects like Chainlink you know, to address those issues together. Yeah, super interesting. So 
uh, I'm curious about the traction thus far because uh, just in doing some some light reading online, it looks like you've got you know over a billion in assets on chain, f- you know over fifteen thousand devices, forty one million plus transactions, you know two hundred thousand community members, and forty four thousand stakers. I mean it it really does these numbers really do reflect uh, a lot of progress. So I'm I'm curious, even just personally, like how do you how do you feel about these achievements thus far, and how do you think about them in light of where things are going? I, I think we have done a pretty decent job in the past four years in terms of this layer one, right? It has been like doing 50 million transactions, this many users, this many like ecosystem projects, you know, doing very well. You know, if I look at the you know next step, next five years, definitely like I'm, I'm very bullish on the web stream, which is something we are going to release a preview version for developers in this month. Uh, I think this very is cool. like a missing piece for the entire kind of IOTEX network. Um, and also, like we have a 10, 20 ish business partners. So they are kind of waiting in the line to get, you know, get into WebStream. So they have devices, users, data, and they just want to stream in, you know, into the WebStream. Right. So you can, you can power different D apps on different layer ones, uh, IOTEX included, but could also be like Polygon, you know, BSC, Avalanche, Near, so on and so forth, Ethereum. Um, so definitely, like I think once we launch WebStream, give it like a one to two months for the builders to, to take, out, take it down. Uh, I, I think our our growth will be much stronger compared to the uh, past four years. Love it. So backing up a little bit, I'm curious any advice you'd have for founders building in the Web3 kind of blockchain crypto space more generally? Um, I think if like there are a lot of like a rooms for building, right? So one of the reasons actually, you know, you know, we are building WebStream is because we want to open up a new design space for developers. As you can tell in the past few years, DeFi, NFT game, I think there are a lot of innovations, a lot of new ideas has been tried to explore. Some of them actually work, some of them uh, not. But I feel like, you know, like the design space for the DeFi, NFT is kind of ex- exhausted in a way. So we need some like a new nutritional element here to help the developers to again, to open up their kind of innovation. So WebStream is such a thing, right? So we have some like a weird, interesting, funny kind of uh, things for you guys to do if you want to build. Uh, for example, we're working with like a biking company, right? So they want to do this bike, bike to earn. Sounds weird, but something very interesting. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so definitely like uh, if you want to learn more, just just keep uh, stay tuned about the launch of WebStream, which is coming in about you know two to four weeks. Perfect. So wrapping up here, uh, what's the best way for people to kind of follow along your journey and even get plugged in if they're developers? You know, uh, like you just mentioned uh, previously, like what's the best way for for people to keep keep in touch and follow along? Yeah, so definitely like a look at the web- website iotx.io. And we do have like kind of brand new website. It's called machinefi.com. Um, so you can learn more things about machinefi.com on you know, machinefi on machinefi.com. Another way to get in touch with us is definitely like uh, send us an email. Um, you can uh, send it to bd at iotx.io if you want to build something, if you want to do a partnership with us. Perfect. Well, Alan, thank you so much for the time. Really enjoyed chatting and uh, I'm excited to see everything that happens over the coming weeks and months. Definitely. Thanks for having me. All right. Take care. Okay.